and what his legacy uh, is in my perspective. My father to me was an artist, but his contribution to this world to me goes much far beyond his art. And um, I feel like my father had an important message to give to this world, to contribute to this world. This message that he has from his own life story, you know, was very important for him to share. And I feel like he was doing a lot of things outside of the art world, visiting ruined sites, going on his own personal pilgrimage, you know, and humility before, you know, the spirit world so that he could better communicate his ideas to the world. When I saw this sketch on the wall, this uh, made my heart do a couple of somersaults because to me, this rough sketch here embodied his life and his and his philosophies, you know, and his healing journey. What my father is picturing here is he is picturing, you see in the middle of the screen, two baby clowns, two tsuka, two baby clowns, and at any rate, they're they're there and then it, they go through a journey. And this journey that they go through is actually also a picture of our journey. Our journey to become whole, to become the people that we want to become, and to become Hopi, in my father's perspective. So, the first stage of this journey begins in conception. And uh, so here we have a sketch of my father, and of course this little baby here is from the mural in the other room. But at any rate, just as we are conceived in the womb, so the clown is also conceived in the womb. And you can see here my father's sketch of the two baby clowns, and then you have my grandfather's painting of um, this very same um, phenomenon. This is our beginning point. That's my father's beginning point, as it is all of ours. And then we're born into this world. And you see here in this mural, this, this, uh, what this uh, picture is from the mural is this the, the emergence of all people into this world, world from a Hopi perspective from Sipapu or Nang Sipu in Tewa, that we came out into this world, and here you notice that the people are of all colors. They're all colors. But then, kind of hiding in the back, there's this blue guy there. And the, the, blue, the blue guy is Powaka. The blue guy is the witch. And he represents the unhealed part of man. And unfortunately, when we're born into this world, we're all born with areas in our life that are unhealed. What the clowns do is they get to the roof of the house when they're born ceremonially and they cry from the rooftops four times. Some of you have been to Hopi and had dust thrown on your head by them maybe, but at any rate, uh, they're, they're crying four times, indicating that this is the first cries of life that they've just been born into this world. And then, of course, they find the most ridiculous way to get down to the plaza. At that point, we enter a phase of discovery. And as the clowns make their way uh, into the plaza, you know, they're kind of like, they're kind of like infants, you know, how like little babies will kind of stare at a section of the wall, you know. And then, you know, they'll see somebody's face and you know finally they'll focus on the face and they'll see the face and they'll meditate on that for a while and then something else get their attention. Now they're they're showing us a stage in our lives that as we're young uh, children, you know, how we're discovering things in life, you know. 
we're becoming aware of our own strengths, of our own weaknesses, you know, of our own bodies, of our own minds, you know, of our own abilities, you know. And we're also becoming aware of our conscience and the spirit world around us, you know. And at this point, they um, go into the next stage of life, which is ego. And I know when the clowns discover, finally they discover the kachina, then they go through the line to discover who is the chief. And once they find the chief, then they begin introducing themselves to the chief. And basically with uh, formalities, they all explain to this Kachina chief, you know, I'm the boss of these guys, you know. And of course the next one will come and he'll also, you know, explain, you know, well, that guy's not really the boss, I'm, kind of, I'm the boss, you know. And, and they, they're, what they're showing us is the ego that we have, you see, the ego that we have as children. Then they go into the next phase of their, uh, of, their uh, of life, of their existence. They begin building a dream house there at the center of the plaza, you know. They're having a good time in their life. They're pursuing uh, the dream of life, and which is a picture of us as we come into, uh, you know, our youth years, and we're full of energy, and we're full of ambition, and we're full of dreams. Now we're experiencing dysfunction, life out of balance, you know, life with vice because our ego has been fed, our pride has been fed, you know. And what happens is that dysfunction leads us to our own destru destruction. And actually, to tie this back into the clown, you see, the clown basically re represents us, as you can see. The kachina, on the other hand, the kachina represents the spirit world, everything that's in balance. In our own dysfunction, it brings us to destruction. And the clowns, you see, have pokes in their conscience as they continue uh, their blasphemies and their irreverence there on the two-day ceremony of, of, in the plaza. And while they're there, they begin to be visited. And certain, uh, you know, warrior or disciplinarian kachinas begin to come and begin just to poke them, you know, give them a little hit here and there, you know, poke them around. And that's, see, that's, our conscience is working on us. And we begin to be introspective. And we begin to pray. And we begin to come back to the basic things in life, valuing relationships. Valuing time, valuing prayer and spirituality, and we purify ourselves, and we start to make amends with others. It's showing us the path of a better way, you see, purifying ourselves, rediscovering our conscience. And this brings us to a balanced life. For my father, I feel like this was his path, this was his journey. He was born to be a Hopi, although his path to become Hopi, to become balanced, was a long journey. But he ended that journey as a Hopi. And I think that the contributions that he made, you know, affected many of us to also pursue that for ourselves.